protection is still holding strong. Awesome. If you want to check out what we put on here, um, I will put in the card the other weekend washes where you saw us apply some of the protection. seedling. Wow, so this stuff produces a lot of thick foam. That's awesome. Welcome guys to Miranda Detailing. Welcome to another weekend wash. We're going to clean the Lexus inside and out quickly. I'm going to show you what we're using for the products and do a giveaway for the detail glove box. This month, 3D products are in the box. They did a takeover, so you get wash and wax, you get their orange degreaser, you get a bottle of Beat It Up, all 16 ounce bottles, you get some towels, you also get a little keychain of 3D Speed. 3D Speed and 3D One, well known across the detailing community and especially with mobile detailers. I used 3D1 for years, and I still do, but especially when I was mobile, did some amazing work and made some awesome money with that product. I wanna also talk to you guys about the Southern Detailers Conference that we're going to be attending in a few weeks. Flashback. So our Lexus was washed, what, maybe two weeks ago now? And uh, we drove it a little bit, so it does need some washing, but it's not too bad. I am gonna clean up the inside as well. We do have evening plans, so I want this thing looking nice and fresh. The shop, however, is a big mess. We got some old ATVs, so I'm actually working on these. This is my wife's. It's an older uh, 2006 Kawasaki Bayou 250. It's actually a really nice machine. Awesome, awesome shape. And I have an old 88 Yamaha, um, I believe it's a Moto 4 200 much older. It's still in good shape, but um, this is actually much nicer. I'm going to be doing some modifications to it. Nothing crazy. Nothing. I'm not like a gearhead or anything like that. I'm actually just doing simple modifications, like putting a little USB charger that goes straight to the battery and a few other little things and uh, getting ready to do like some fun trail riding because we do have some trails around here and uh, even a couple of hours away. But maybe I'll share that in another video. Let's focus on what came in the maze box. It was a 3D takeover. Now, if you're familiar with 3D products, 3D Speed, 3D One, they are well known across the detailing community, especially for mobile guys, because so many of their products are sun friendly. So we have the wash and wax. We have Beat It Up, which is actually getting around on YouTube. Lots of other detailers using this and really enjoying it. And I have to say, I really like it as well. I did use a little bit of it on our own vehicle from the last wash. And I know I'm late on this. Um, I'm gonna try to get this out this week. So you should be watching it on Wednesday. Uh, today is Sunday. So I'm gonna have to shoot this, edit it quickly and get it to you guys because I will be giving away or actually the glove box will be giving away a box uh, with all the 3D stuff in it. They're reserving one for a lucky winner. So what I'm going to do is ask you to watch a video, watch this video, and in that video, tell me what windshield coating did we use? It's actually a pretty easy one. It's a pretty easy, um, you know, scavenger hunt, I guess, if you want to call it that. Because in that video, you'll see, you can go down to the minute mark and you'll see what we use to polish it, but especially what we use to coat it. And I will have links if you are interested in that coating as well. It's a two-year windshield coating. The application is one of the easiest ever. So let me know down below. You have to hashtag it, however, detail glove box. So hashtag detail glove box and the correct answer. And then I'll choose it in about a week and I choose it live on Instagram, but then I will show you the winner here on YouTube. So you have to subscribe and click that bell for all the notifications. That way you don't miss stuff. That way you'll be able to see who won. And if you didn't win, stick around. We're trying to do more and more giveaways, but we also have orange degreaser. Now I have used a lot of this in the past. It is excellent. This you can dilute up to one to 10. 
and I actually don't know if it's already ready to use in here. I think it's ready to use in here. I don't know if it's dilutable or not. Um, but, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to, to find that out or not. But you can buy this in gallon form. It's very cheap. It's great for pre-washing. So you can use it as an APC wash. If you dilute it one to four, one to 10, you can use it for interiors. It's completely fine. It's not so caustic. It's not so strong that you'll have interior issues, plastic and leather issues. You can definitely use it for the interior to clean. Um, so I'll probably use a little bit of that because my cup holders and stuff are a little grungy, but let's get to mixing up some soap in our foam cannon and we'll just give this thing a quick wash. Whoa. And we'll get this thing cleaned up and uh, see how the protection is doing on it as well. And then just give it a nice light application of beat it up. End of flashback. So I am really excited about the Southern Detailers Conference. It's going to be held in Lexington, Kentucky. We got our tickets, we made our reservations about a month ago, and we're gonna be going there. So if anyone is going to be going there, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of filming, kind of blog or vlog style. Uh, but if anyone wants to meet and greet, you know, it would be great to meet some fellow detailers, catch up on stuff, talk about products. We're gonna be visiting a couple of the booths there. and. Uh, meeting some people. So I'm really excited about that Southern Detailers Conference. And I hope to make more of these this year. Uh, well, I guess next year, I think January will be the MTE in Florida. Don't know about SEMA, it's so big and it's really far out there. I might be able to do that, we'll see. I like to attend these smaller ones because they're really detail oriented for detailers. Does that make sense? Oh, these seedlings. These pine trees. So we have had quite the busy month. We have lots of coatings scheduled in for this month, going into the next month. And we also got um, a customer from a, a big corporation around here, a big organization, um, and their cars got rust overspray over like 10 to 15 cars. We just gave a quote for that and scheduled the first three vehicles and uh, hopefully those jobs will go smoothly. I did some test spots and they have to all be polished. Every square inch of the vehicle has to be polished. I'm gonna do some of the iron removal, see if that can pull some of those rust spots off, um, at least get the majority of it. And then we still have to polish because it's just everywhere over all of the paint, the plastic, the chrome bits and trim and black gloss areas. It really messed up a lot of vehicles. So we just kind of landed that contract for like 10 to 15 cars. So that is gonna keep us busy for June and July, plus all the other coatings and stuff that we have going on. And the training is still going on. I believe we have, it's either a June or July dates available. If you go to thedetailingworkshop.com, you'll see those days available. If you are interested in those, sign up for those. Um, and if you have questions, just reach out to us or Gabe from Total Detailing, and he'll answer any questions that you have about the training. Now, as far as other stuff that we've been doing, more on the entertainment side, um, we got these old ATVs and I got like a really old one, an old Yamaha 88, 200, but they're nothing crazy. They're 200 and then a 250 Kawasaki Bayou. And they're just to kick around, you know, just to go on some trails and do easy, fun stuff. Uh, the Kawasaki is actually 2006. It's in really good condition, like one owner. That one's my wife's and I got the older Yamaha. And we're just doing little little mods to it. Nothing crazy, nothing like performance mods, just like putting USB adapters and stuff like I showed you in the beginning. Um, but <clears throat> fun little machines and I have to get a trailer because they don't fit in the detailing trailer. I'm not gonna use it for that purpose anyway because the detailing trailer is still for sale. If people want it, it's still available. So go check out that card, um, the video on it, all the information is in the description as well. And it goes to my website. I have everything listed there, the price and all of that. It's cash only, pickup only, and it has everything in it except for the pressure washer. So if you wanna pay for me to get the pressure washer and reinstall it, I can do that. Or you can take it as is and put your own pressure washer in it. It's up to you, but it comes with pretty much everything, like 80% of the tools that you need to start a mobile detailing business. Um, so if you're interested in the trailer, then definitely call me, text me, serious buyers only. If you are interested, go check out the information first and the price. I'm listing it now 
for nine grand without the pressure washer, 10 grand with the pressure washer, and as it stands right now. Trailers like that around here especially are going for five grand, empty, like brand new already. And of course, this one's, you know, two, almost three years old now. So it does have some, some age, but it has brand new steel radials uh, tires on them. And of course it's, it's all reinforced and it's all um, set up inside for detailing. It's not just an ordinary trailer, it's purposely set up for that. It's plumbed, it's got uh, wired up for power and everything. So it's ready to go. If you were to do that yourself, yeah, you could spend five grand on the trailer and then spend a lot of time and money also setting it up the way that you want. So let me know if you're interested in that trailer. Give me a call or a text, but serious buyers only, pick up cash only. If you want to do payments, you can do payments, but they got to be in like large chunks, like maybe four large payments, but the trailer has to stay here until everything's paid off. It's the only way I can do it um, because of course it is titled, it's registered in our name, you can't have it until it's fully paid for. Just makes sense, right? So again, if you're interested, let me know if you are interested and the trailer could be yours. Oh, and actually what I was saying before is I need to get a six by 12 utility trailer to haul the ATV. So I think I found one locally that I'm gonna go pick up tomorrow or Tuesday. And uh, you might see that in the videos as well. Now, if you're wondering about these chairs, I will have links to these chairs. I have the two different versions from Amazon. My knees and my back are kind of shot and it's not just from detailing, it's from years of snowboarding and other stuff, other physical work that I used to do years ago. So this just, you know, kind of accentuated it. So getting these rolly chairs like this, they're heavy duty, they're cushioned they will save your back and knees, especially when you're doing wheels or polishing on low panels. Oh, these are awesome. They're a little pricey, but well worth it. Or you can spend the crazy amount of money and get the Viper chairs, which I might one of these days, just a splurge. So I'm gonna use the orange degreaser, just straight out of the bottle here. And again, I don't know what dilution ratio it is. If anyone knows, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Do you know what dilution ratio this comes in? Or is it ready to use? It is, is it already at one to four, one to 10, or just straight? I don't know. Let me know down below. Now, as far as doing wheels first, or you know, the body first, I've talked about this before. Don't split hairs, guys. It's okay. It's okay. If you have your reason for doing wheels first or whatever, that's totally cool. Totally cool. Don't, don't try to like call others out about it because if you don't know all the facts and you're just making statements, ooh, man, you can really look dumb. I do the wheels last because I don't worry about my water here. I'm not worried about spots because my water here is not bad. If I was worried, I have my DI uh, water system and I would just rinse it and let it sit like this, totally fine. Could do wheels first, not a big deal. I've done it both ways, doesn't make a difference in my world. Now, if it does in your world, Yes, you do what you must do. Uh, just don't think that that's a rule across the board because it's not. People have their methods of doing things for their own particular reasons. And if there's no damage being caused, then you don't need to make a rule about it. So don't, don't worry yourself about, do you do wheels first or he doesn't do wheels first, he doesn't last, that makes him an unprofessional. Goodness, seriously. No, guys, that's just so silly, so silly. If you're with two people, it doesn't matter if you do wheels first or not. It's usually Jess and I working and we're flying around the vehicle. Everything is staying wet. Everything is staying clean. It's not a big deal. And the funniest thing is when they say, I do, if you do the wheels last, it's gonna get onto the paint. I don't know what you're talking about. The only way it's gonna get onto the paint is if I'm doing this. And even if that happens, is it really that big of a deal? Like it's dirtying up your paint and now you're just gonna dry it like that? No. You just rinse it, plain and simple. It's, it's not a big deal. Go watch that video I did about wheels first. It's kind of funny because I talk about those things and so many detailers just uh, dogmatically talk about these things and, and make rules up. Like what are they, the detailing gatekeepers? Relax about it. 
Goodness, just detailing. If you got your own reasons, cool. But kind of keep it to yourself because if I have my own reasons for doing it, then I have my own reasons for doing it. If you want to ask and say, hey, why are you doing it that way? That's cool, and I'll give you the answer. But if I give you the answer and then you say, see, you're wrong. No, no, I'm not. That's where the dogmatic or gatekeeper elitist type of thinking comes into play. We don't need that in detailing. It's just detailing. Now, if you get this in the gallon form, you can put it in the pump sprayers and you can use it like an APC rinse. It's actually really good stuff. I'm just doing this because I see a little bit of grunge down here that didn't just come off with the wash. So you can let that sit, softens up grime and junk. Is there stuff down here too? No, it's just scratches. Um, so it'll soften junk up and then you can rinse it off just like the normal APC wash or APC rinse. So you can use it as a pre-rinse. Great in door jams as well. And you just rinse it off and you're done and go about washing. Now I get some questions about APC rinsing. Um, and they ask, is that going to degrade waxes and sealants? Yeah, yeah, it will. Um, we do APC rinsing on almost all the vehicles we do, unless they're maintenance vehicles, because the vehicles need it. We're starting from scratch with those vehicles. So we're gonna use strong chemicals and APCs and cleaners on the exterior. We don't, we're not worried about waxes and sealants. Those are gonna be gone by the time we're done doing what we're doing. So APC rinsing or that type of like heavy duty pre-washing is only for vehicles that you're doing full details on, that, that are not maintenance details. For maintenance details, no, you don't need to do that. You can use pH neutral APCs and cleaners or shampoos or snow foams. That's okay to use, and even sometimes I, I do that if necessary on some of the coating jobs uh, that are coming back for their maintenance washes. But if it's just wax or sealed, I don't do that. Rinse it, and then foam it, wash it per normal, and, and it'll be fine because you're letting the protection do its thing and if you do use an APC like that you know orange degreaser it, it will start to weaken or even strip some of the protection off so just use you know common sense soundness of mind when it comes to that all right so the Lexus is now washed and the protection is really holding up well you can see it's beating like crazy so it's still holding up extremely well. So I'm gonna blow dry the majority of it and then use some of the beat it up with the nice green plush towel and uh, get any touch ups and just do a light application. want to give you guys a sneak peek of this stuff right here. This is from Shine Your Light Detailing, Tim's High Gloss Detailer. I will have this video out this Friday. So check it out. Tim and Chrissy from Shine Your Light Detailing came <laughs> down here to visit us. Uh, well, they were actually doing other things down here that just happened to be here, uh, around here. So uh, we scheduled for them to come over and we washed her car and we talk about his spray. You don't want to miss that video. This stuff again is a mobile detailer's friend very interesting formulation he mixes it himself you don't want to miss that video so go check it out this friday but for now we're going to use the 3d beat it up this has some pretty hefty protection um, and the application of it is very easy but once again because so many of these sprays are on the market um, some people like the spray application but are having some issues with smearing and streaking and that's basically because of the protection that's in here. Any polymer or SI2, SiO2 polymers that are in these types of products, when you over apply them, it causes streaking. There is a solution, of course, you just use either a mist of water or a damp towel to get rid of that. But I know some people, it's an extra step and they don't like that. They just want something super easy with no smearing. But you know, it, it, there's drawbacks to a product like that. If you're not having a ton of smearing, that means there's not a ton of protection in it. The Tim's uh, high gloss detailer has very minimal protection. It's made for gloss and slickness, no smearing whatsoever, but the protection is not there. So it's not that type of a product. But if you do want a product with protection, you're gonna have to deal with 
the smearing sometimes, especially if you're a mobile guy out in the full sun. It's just going to happen. But you can minimize it by using very, very little product, like a mist, like that. Mist it into the towel. That's all you need. You'll see it go on. You'll feel it go on. And then when you flip the towel, then you feel the slickness. And if you do get some smearing, it's okay, especially on black cars, it will go away with a damp towel or a mist of water. So just, just remember that. You can even apply this wet. You can have a slightly damp towel and apply it with a damp towel and that helps spread it out and not leave high spots or smearing or streaking because uh, a dry towel, you know, is not gonna spread the product out as evenly as a damp towel would. You're basically using the water not as a catalyst, but kind of, oh, there's a little thing in here, it's annoying me, there we go. Uh, but kind of like a, a solution to spread it out. And SiO2 is water friendly in these types of solutions. They're, they're blended that way so that they can still bond immediately and add protection, oh, an amazing slickness. Now I already have protection on here, I know I'm layering it, but that's what you're supposed to do when you maintain protection, is add layers. And some may say, how do you know that bottom layer is still doing its thing? If it's beading, who cares if it's the top layer or the bottom layer? If you're maintaining it every month or every two months or every three months for a customer, you know, for example, as long as it's beating and it's slick, it doesn't matter if it's the top protection or the bottom protection. Don't get caught up in that. That gets way too confusing. And what are you gonna do? Strip down the, your customer's vehicle with some sort of a, a prep wash to see if the protection underneath it is still there? Don't do that. Don't do that. Apply whatever protection you use, sealants, waxes, whatever, and then use toppers to go on top of it. It's okay if it's still beating, as long as it's beating. If it comes back every few months and it's still beating, don't get caught up in trying to figure out if it's the protection underneath or the top layer protection. Don't worry about that, don't overthink it. For mobile detailers or detailers in general who have businesses, overthinking it like that causes issues. The ones who overthink it like that are the enthusiasts or you guys who you know, do it on the side or DIYers or whatever, but that's totally fine for them to do. If you wanna nitpick and you know, do stuff you know, like that, do not compare it to the detailing business. They do not jive, they don't. If you're doing it as a business, it's going to be different. That's just the way it is. Enthusiasts and detailing professional businesses sometimes clash, not all the time. I have many good detailing enthusiast friends um, who do this on the side, and they're amazing. They get it, they understand, and if they want to talk about those things, like is it the protection underneath, or the layers, and all that stuff, that's totally cool. But don't push that agenda onto the professional detailer that does not care about those things. If the customer's happy with their paint that's glossy and beading all the time, then I'm happy with it. Does not matter. So again, just don't get caught up in that. It gets way too crazy and all this bullying happens because of it and all this drama. Stop with the detailing drama. And speaking of detailing drama, please, to my fellow detailers who are on YouTube but mostly on the smaller social media platforms, TikTok and Instagram, please stop with the aggressive accusations against other detailers on YouTube or whatever. The fact of the matter is, if you don't know them personally, if you don't know everything that they're doing in their world and in their business or whatever, and you see them talking about facts that you don't quite agree with, or you think they're a lie or a scam or they're sold out or whatever, if you don't know them personally, shush. You don't have the right to talk about them in a negative way. You don't have that right. Freedom of speech is different than slander. Slander can actually legally, someone can be brought to court because of that. Don't do that. Don't slander other detailers. If you don't know them personally, you think you may have all the facts. There's some guys out there who accuse other larger prominent uh, detailers on YouTube and accuse them of certain things when they don't have all the facts. It's actually hearsay, it's slander, and they're attacking without getting all of the information, without all the facts. And then they gain followers because of that. And you get this, this witch hunt it's unhealthy. So my fellow detailers, if you want to share knowledge, share knowledge. Don't accuse other detailers or think that you're calling them out because you're not. If you don't know all the facts, it's just hearsay. It's slander. And I'm not going to listen to any of your advice if you're doing that type of thing. You really shouldn't be listening to other detailers who are simply 
bashing other detailers. So please stop that, put that all aside, focus on you, focus on your business. If you have knowledge to share, share it freely. Do not accuse and do not create detailing drama. It's sickening, it's toxic, it's not good, and then nobody gets the facts. Nobody believes anybody anymore because of that. So stop doing that, that is unhealthy. Whether in your personal life or especially in the detailing world, because of so many variables that we deal with, I talk about that a lot. I get people saying, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing that wrong. They don't have the right to say that because they're not here, working on this job, working with this customer, Everything that they say is null and void. It means nothing. They might make some good points, and maybe in their world it might work, but if they're not asking the appropriate questions and asking me, why am I doing it this way, and then understanding it, instead of asking in an accusative way, which I can see right through, um, it doesn't help anybody. Ask questions to gain the knowledge and say, oh, that's why he does it that way. Okay, that makes sense. I won't do it myself, but I see in his world, I see how that works. Okay, great, cool. Every detail is gonna have their methods and techniques and ways and reasons of doing things. Do not accuse other detailers. If you know them personally, I guess that's different, but even then, why would you slander someone that you know personally? That's not cool. Don't do that. That's not healthy. So I know, I, I had to talk about that stuff. This is not just against me, because uh, I get people still saying stuff against me, but I don't worry about that anymore. I'm more worried about the other detailers now, because it's those other detailers that are causing that drama and causing that confusion. If you don't like a certain detailer, just don't follow him. You do your own thing and share knowledge that you, if you think you, know, you, you can correct that person, or you want to share knowledge so that others, you know, see your way um, and then see the other person's way and that they'll make their own decision. We will make our own decision as to who we want to believe or follow or whatever. That's not up to you to try to like out someone and, and accuse them and say, oh, they're not doing this. See, now they're, it's a scam. We just exposed them. You didn't expose anything. It's just hearsay and slander. So don't do that. Hmm. This stuff, by the way, it smells so good. And I'm not getting, I'm not getting any smearing that I can see because I'm going very, very light. But it, it definitely adds slickness. As far as gloss on a white car, it's kind of hard to tell, but I mean, it looks, looks gorgeous. And yeah, you can use this on glass. Again, just use it very sparingly. I would probably like apply it onto the paint like this and then go up onto the glass so that you're using very, very little amount of it. Use it very sparingly. And if you get a little drop of water in it, it's okay, because it, it helps kind of spread it out. I was watching Mike Phillips, which, you know, he's actually now with 3D, he used to be with AutoGeek, but now he's with 3D. Um, don't know why, don't really care. He's a cool guy, does amazing work, learned so much from him. But I saw him detailing a vehicle and use this almost like a spray on spray off application. So I'm kind of curious about that. I might use that next time. Doesn't say you can do it like that, but I thought I saw him do that. Let me know if you've watched him do that. I think he did a 3D video on the channel live. I think he did that. I could be wrong. Let me know. Uh, maybe search for the video and maybe I'll search for the video too and put it in the comments down below and see if you can find that video. Um, I'm gonna put this on the windshield too, just a little bit, just to add that slickness and gloss and clean up any little drips. But a lot of these products can do that. I think if you already have a layer of this and you wash the vehicle and you spray it on wet, then you can rinse it off. Ceramic will bond to ceramic. May not be as effective, might be a little waste of a product um, like that. It's not like Gion Wet Coat or some of the other spray on products like that that bond immediately. Um, but it might have that effect. So I'll have to try that later. All right, as far as interior goes, I'm gonna be really quick here because I'm running out of time. Basically, I just want to dust, eh. and I'm using Koshkemi Top Star. I just got this from Car Supplies Warehouse and I wanna give it a try in here. I'm not gonna use the orangey greaser because I don't need to. Um, it's actually really not that bad. I just need like a, an interior detailer, and this is an interior detailer with good UV protection. So great for maintenance washing as well for maintenance interior cleaning.
You, you know what I mean. And this usually comes with a little squeeze bottle, like tip. I didn't like that. I want the spray. So I got it. So I got a spray trigger on it. Works way better. Ooh, and it smells nice too. Kind of a nice fresh smell. And this doesn't have any gloss to it at all. So if you go over the dash, totally fine. You can go over the touch screen panels, totally fine. A lot of people really freak out about these touch screen panels and they're like, what do you clean them with? It's okay, your fingers touch it all the time. There's oils on it all the time. Use water, use a little glass cleaner, use something like this, put some UV protection on it. It's not a big deal. It's not like old technology or, you know, the old screens that you'd have a lot of issues with. It's not like that anymore. And this is a 2011, so don't worry about that. Just clean it gently with a nice soft towel, a little bit of glass cleaner, or just water, you'll be fine. It's not gonna damage anything. Just, again, guys, you've gotta use common sense with stuff. Even magic erasers, I hear too much weirdness about magic erasers on leather. You know, if it's older leather, yeah, I get it. But you can just soak a magic eraser, use a little bit of APC, and you gently, gently clean an area if it's a stubborn thing that won't come out and, and it's a last resort. It's not going to completely destroy your leather. If you attack it like this, yes, it will. Once again, my detailing friends, you must use common sense. I know, a lot of that sense, I guess, isn't common anymore. People just, I don't know, they, they hear too much, they, they read too much, they don't understand things, they hear these gatekeeping detailers say things and they just believe them without testing it themselves. Nah, not me. I'm gonna do things the way that I see fit for me. I'll try it, I'll experiment, if it works. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. That's a horrible sound. Oh, much better. You can use these on the floor mats because there's no greasiness or slickness or anything. And I'm done with this towel for all the top surfaces, so I'm gonna use it on the mats. That really freshens up the interior. It makes the mats look really nice too. All right, the interior is looking nice and clean. Awesome. That's all ready. Exterior is looking good. I'm gonna dress the tires and it'll be ready for date night. For tire dressing, we're gonna use the Jay Leno's ceramic tire dressing. Why? Because I like it. That's why. When it comes to tire dressings, I also do not worry about longevity because my customers don't care about it. As long as their tires are clean, they know they're gonna get dirty again. So I don't worry about that. This produces a really nice finish. All right, now she's ready for date night. So with the Lexus done, I'm now going to turn my attention to this and do my little mods on it. I'm not going to film any of that. Unless you guys are really interested, I might go into detail later. Uh, but uh, the channel is not focused on ATVs and quads and all that stuff. It's, it's for detailing, of course. But if you do want to get your hands on the 3D box for this month, I know, again, it's a little late. And by the time I pick the winner, it'll be towards the end of the month. But it's okay. They have reserved a box for you and you can still win the 3D giveaway box, uh, or the takeover box, excuse me. So again, check out that video in the beginning of the video. Go back there, check it out. Hashtag detail glove box with the correct answer. Once again, go follow me on Instagram, Miranda, two underscores detailing, and I'll announce it on a live um, on Instagram a week from now, and then I'll post on here on YouTube as well as like a picture 
uh, a picture post with the winner and all that. Now, if you win, of course, I'm gonna contact you in the comment that you won, and that's how you'll know that you won. That's the only way that I'm gonna be able to contact you, and then I'll give your information to the Detail Glove Box, and they will send you out a box pronto. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. It is so hot. I'm gonna get working on the ATV, and then I'm gonna go jump in the pool, because it's already like 90s and crazy humid. It was like that all week. So guys, remember that advice for my fellow detailers who are on Instagram and TikTok, especially the smaller platforms. There seems to be just a lot of drama, back and forth, accusations, trying to out other people. All of that is null and void. It's ridiculous. Don't believe in that stuff. It's not good. And I know a couple of detailers on TikTok that I actually do follow because some of their information is very good. They gravitate towards the accusations because they don't like someone or they don't like, for whatever reason, the information that they shared or the way that they do it. If you do not know them personally, you do not have the right to accuse them or slander them. You think you have all the information and all the facts, but you do not. It's like going to court for defamation. It's ridiculous. You, you don't need to do that. We're detailers. Everybody has their own methods and ways of doing things. If you don't agree or like it, then don't follow the person and do your own thing. Don't create these witch hunting clicks that are actually very toxic to the detailing community because they will then go out and start accusing others because of a connection that, say, I might have to other fellow detailers that they don't like. And all of a sudden, that, those accusations start coming upon me when it's not the case, when it's not true. So look, guys, seek detailing truths. Don't go for someone who is trying to accuse or call out someone else, especially if they don't know them. That's just slander and it's hearsay. Don't believe in that stuff. Do your own thing. If you like someone, follow them, listen to them. If you don't like someone, then don't follow them. You don't have to comment. You don't have to try to accuse them or out them or teach them or show them the right way. No, no, because you're not going to do that because you're not asking questions. You're just making accusations. It's unhealthy. So please, my fellow detailers, stop doing that. It's unhealthy. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff because if you don't watch or subscribe, you might miss stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great week.